Hello, welcome to Better Music. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, new series of saxophones by uh, Yanagisawa. And uh, to help us out, we've got Ben Sutcliffe here. He's coming to um, do a bit of playing for us. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, Wo 1, the uh, Wo 10, and the Wo 20 series. And uh, so Ben's going to have a little play of the uh, Wo 1 first up. <laughs> Okay, so the uh, Wo one replaces the uh, 901 series saxophone, and uh, Ben, there's a bit of been a bit of improvement and movement on the uh, the key work. Can you tell us a bit about that? The key work layout on these is really great, anyway. Um, a couple of things that I noticed when I played this one is the front F is a new design, which is super easy to get to. Um, it's a much lower profile. You can really just roll your finger up. It's almost like rolling to an A key on the clarinet or something. Um, the high E key is in a different spot now on the right hand stack and they've changed the design of the low E flat and the low C keys. Um, not that it's dramatically different but it's certainly, the ergonomics of the saxophone is just incredible. You can really get over it really well. I think they're great. They're by far my favourite new saxophone to, to play or to recommend to students. So as this is the uh, Yanagisawa entry level um, saxophone, Ben, do you think this is good enough for someone who wants to be a pro? or uh, maybe an older beginner? Oh, absolutely. Look, I think the difference between these and the, and the other horns, which we'll look at in a minute, is not so much in the quality of the saxophone, but in the way it plays. This one has a, a what we call a post or a poster body construction, so there's no ribs holding the key work on. It's a much livelier and faster really smooth, uh, really one. Okay, great. Well, let's hear a little bit uh, what Ben can do with the uh, horn. That's great, Ben. As we heard, Ben's um, really using the full dynamic range of the instrument. Um, is there any particular genre uh, or feel that you think this horn would be suited to, or is it, is it an all-round good horn? I think these work in any kind of situation. Honestly, they're, they're lively, they have a good, a healthy amount of resistance in them. Um, a really well-balanced colour spectrum, they're not too strong in the mid-range, which a lot of modern saxophones I find are, which gives them a really, what you, what we would often call like a boxy feel in the yeah. sound, or a really okay. tight feel. Yeah. Um, so really well-balanced tonally, um, I'd happily play one of these. So now we've, um, we've just changed over to the uh, Woe 10, so this is a uh, brass body alto, but this is the next this is the next in the range of the Yanagisawa. This is the uh, the Wo 10. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this one, Ben? Yeah, the first thing I notice about this one is that um, to play, it's a little bit more. Uh, what's the word? It's a it's a you, weightier you sound. Me, it has has a, a, a ribbed construction, um, so there's a little bit more a little bit more weight in the sound, and I think it depends as to like what you prefer as to whether you prefer this or the the Wo 1. Um, the key work feels pretty much like just every, as I said when I was putting it together, it just feels like everything's in exactly the same spot. So yep. ergonomically they're wonderful. Same, same things. We've got a few different features here with the double arm down the bottom. Yep. Tonally they, they blow a little bit bigger. There's a little bit more resistance in them I think. Um, but, you know, they're a young Sara and they play really well. Straight out of the box, that's the other thing about these. Yeah, absolutely. You just don't need to set them up and their build quality I've noticed over the years is just Yanagisawa always seem to just have the most amazing build quality straight out of the factory. So. Okay, well let's have a listen. <laughs> That's great. 
So, uh, Ben, how do you how do you think it compares to the um, the O1? Just as far as say the dynamic range goes, the and the and the, and the tone the tonal color. Do you feel there's a difference in the in the color? I think that the biggest difference for me is actually not. I think the tonal color is feels pretty much the same. The difference lies in the response of the instrument. Okay, from in, from a player's perspective, yeah, or do you think from a from sound a, perspective? I, I think from a player's perspective, which always affects how you sound. Yeah. Um, and so I, this one feel you can, it, and my, in my experience generally of, of instruments that are poster body construction, they always feel kind of much lighter and lively to play, and really kind of playful, and they're just really kind of sprightly, and the, the sound dances a bit more. It's yep. really nimble. Yep. These ones are a little bit, a little bit more resistant, a bit more weight in the sound, and I think it just comes down to what you want. Yep. Um, these, the the WA1 and the WA10, I I'm pretty sure both have the same tube. So what we're what we're looking at is a difference in in the keyword construction, which gives a different feel to the weight of the sound. Okay, all right. Um, a lot of players complain about uh, say inconsistency over the break, going from the lower to the um, mid octaves. How do you find oh, the C sharp to D is, is amazing? Yeah. There's there's a lot of pop, a lot of pop and color and and um, immediacy in the response of the D, and the C sharp's quite broad. It's without mentioning other, you know, saxophone manufacturers. Sure. It's, yep. It's really wonderful. Okay, so we've looked at uh, the uh, Wo1 and the Wo10 Yanagisawa saxophones. We're coming to have a look at the uh, Wo20. The main difference is the. Uh, the Wo20 series is made of uh, bronze, as opposed to a uh, brass construction with the with the uh, one and the ten series. This is this is a spectacular saxophone. I just I played it a bit before and I got it out and thought, wow. Um, and whether you buy, in, a lot of people do or don't buy into materials making a difference in an instrument. But and I'm not sure what I think about that. But I do know that that this feels very different to play to the brass horn. Being bronze. How, what about the weight? The weight. I is don't there know. any oh, noticeable I difference? I don't notice it as being heavier. Okay, great. So the response. It's, it's a very, very slick, lively, even, lovely alto. I think for some people it might be a bit. It's uh, maybe it feels a bit darker. I don't know. That would come down to preference. But I'll give it a two. <laughs> Do you think in some ways it has a harder sound than the brass? I think it feels it feels a little bit more resistant. There's a bit more, a bit maybe not harder. I think a bit heavier, weightier again. Okay. Um, it's it's definitely got a tad more resistance, but I think that pays off in terms of what you put out into the room. Yep. Okay. It's hard to kind of capture in this yep. scenario. Yep. And the, and the metal the metal uh, resonator pads. The, I mean, they really help with the projection. I think they balance it out. Okay. I think from from talking to people, the bronze is quite a dark metal. I, I've always found they feel a bit hard, a bit darker to play, and I think the metal resonators sort of balance that out a bit. They add a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of crispness to the articulation across the range of the instrument. Ergonomically, it's exactly the same as the rest of them. It's wonderful. Mm, okay, great. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for coming down. Uh, so that's it. That's the our uh, the new Yanagisawa. Uh, Wo series, WO series. So we've looked at the Wo one, the uh, which is the entry level instrument. We've looked at the Wo ten, and uh, here we have the Wo twenty.